there's stuff going on all over the world. It's not just China and, you know, Paris is building their Grand Paris Express and uh, obviously London just finished uh, the, the Crossrail. And, and so there's there's so many cool projects going on. And you mentioned Paris and, and going there a number of times. We went in 2019. I was actually there on the day that Notre Dame uh, burned down. Uh, we'd left earlier that morning, we'd seen it. And uh, there was just so many like, there's so many light rail trains in all these small towns that you wouldn't think would, you know, warrant one, maybe 100,000, 200,000 people, there's a tramway. And so that level of investment, I think is really impressive. And I think we can do that here too. We just need a little inspiration and a little political will. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Summerman, and that is Jeff Wood from the Overhead Wire and the Talking Headways podcast. Uh, we are bringing Jeff back on the podcast to celebrate his 500th episode of the Talking Headways podcast. Uh, so let's get right to it with Jeff. Jeff Wood, welcome back to the Active Towns podcast. Oh, thanks for having me back. <laughs> I'm giggling and laughing because we're scrambling to get this started. I, I totally messed up our dates and, and everything. So thank, thank you so much for being flexible and, and making this happen. Uh, Jeff, uh, do me a favor and uh, just take an opportunity to introduce everyone to who Jeff Wood is. Sure. Uh, I'm Jeff Wood and the principal at The Overhead Wire. We do a daily newsletter about cities um, in put out something related to uh, to all the news that comes out. We go through about 1,500 news items every day and we pull out the 30 to the 40 are most interesting. And then uh, we also have a podcast called Talking Headways. And on the Talking Headways podcast network, we do interviews on Thursdays. And then every other Monday or every other other Monday, we'll do a Monday show kind of rehashing some of those articles that come out and are popular in the newsletter from the previous week. So we kind of go through and uh, and put stuff together to collect as much information as possible and share it with uh, everybody else around the world. Fantastic. That's great. And where do you uh, call home? Oh, I'm in San Francisco. Yeah. You could uh, maybe you could tell them my hat or or my uh, my soccer jersey here. I got my new <laughs> jersey on. Uh, San Francisco City FC repping. But yeah, yeah. San Francisco yeah. is where I am. Well, you know, it's that's that's pretty good. I mean, you know, you've got the that that orange, you know, it's kind of uh, reminiscent of the burnt orange that you used to wear. That's right. That's right. Uh, I was at I was at the University of Texas at Austin for s seven years. Yeah. So I was undergrad for five years and then did my master's in city planning there for two years and I ran track there. So I, you know, hook them horns, burnt orange and eyes of Texas and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 It's uh, do you make it back here to Austin much? Before the pandemic, I was actually was there uh, January, like I was there for New Year's uh, 2020. And uh, so I was there and then haven't been back since, but I always love going back. I saw and tons of friends there and yeah. all that stuff. So it's it's great. Um, but yeah, I I, um, I try to go back as often as possible. Um, I'm actually trying to find a, a photo for you because I know I didn't send you the photos that I was supposed to, but this one, this one might be uh, entertaining for you. Yeah, there you go. Nice. So that's, a, that's a, that's me running with the burn yeah. orange on back in the day. This was at the armory actually in New York city. Um, they have a track, there. but yeah, Austin is a great, great spot. I'm, I'm jealous of, of, you know, you being able to hang out there so much. Well, and, and we need to get you back because, uh, as you well know, because you the whole point of of what you do and with the overhead wire is you have your finger on the pulse of what's kind of going on globally because you're literally every single day just plowing through articles that are being released. And so you know that things are happening here in, in Austin and, uh, you know, and, and obviously from an urbanism perspective and from an active mobility perspective and from a transit perspective, uh, there's a lot of challenges that we have here in central Texas and in, in Austin. Uh, but yeah, be delighted to have you back here. I'd love to take you out on a nice, uh, bike ride of the Dutch inspired cycle network that's being built out. Uh, as fast as they possibly can. I mean, it's it's pretty freaking exciting to see that. Now, you're a runner, obviously. We just talked about that. And one of the things that I appreciate as also a runner um, and retired former triathlete is that you get to know your city in a different way because you're always out there 
And you said something on one of your recent episodes where you talked about how you pretty much know Austin like the back of your hand because you pretty much ran on almost every neighborhood in every neighborhood on probably most every trail and every probably quote unquote people friendly street there is in the city. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that I really loved about being able to run and know why I still love my neighborhood in Houston. Um, there's like trails that go throughout Kingwood, uh, everywhere, 75 to 80 miles, probably even more now that I've left, but, um, you know, you could go everywhere in the, in the neighborhood without crossing a major street cause they have underpasses at, at the major intersections for those trail system. And then when I got to Austin, you know, basically we were running, you know, upwards of 20 miles at a time. And so I got to know, every neighborhood within a 10 mile radius of, of the university of Texas, I can still smell the beer on sixth street on a Sunday morning. Uh, and you know, those types of things. So it, I, you know, I'm very connected with the place just because I was, I was there and I was on every street. And I also, I think I mentioned maybe on a, a recent show too, how I, how I used to bang, uh, car hoods when they almost hit me too. So, uh, that, that, that might've gotten me in trouble and my teammates in trouble a couple of times, but looking back on it, it was the right thing to do. Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy to say I haven't had to bang on any, uh, any, any car, uh, uh, front hoods in this city in, I can't even remember the last time, but I can definitely remember doing that, uh, when I was running in Chicago. So yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. What's your favorite part? Like, do, you know, do you, mm -hmm. uh, what's your favorite part of the city of, of Austin? Like what's your favorite part to run? What's your favorite part to like just be in? I mean, yeah. obviously there's like the parts that everybody knows, but I mean, you know, scenic drive for me was just like the bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, that I have, uh, done is I, I spend so much time thinking about streets and so much time thinking about, you know, pathways and all that kind of stuff. And when I do head out for a run, the last thing I want to be is on pavement. And so I actually get on my bike ride my bike from the Zilker West neighborhood, which is where I live, uh, down to the trail, down to, well, actually down to the new protected bikeway on Barton Springs Road. Okay. Which is cool to have and into the park and then down to the pool. And then I park my bike there at the pool and then access the, uh, green belt. And so that's my, that's my Zen place is I get in, I do trail running now. So I pretty much run exclusively on dirt, uh, from this point in time. And, and the, even the natural surface trail around the lake is boring to me. I just need to be on highly technical single track, you know, sort of, I can turn my ankle at any moment kind of trail. And so that's, that's where I head as I into, into the green belt, there's seven and a half miles of trails there. If you, if you kind of add them all, all the little uh, segments in there. So I can, I can go out and back and get 15 miles in. And if I'm training for something like I, I started doing ultras. And so if I, if I'm training for an ultra or whatever, I, I can do a double or a triple out and back, you know, in there and, and get in a whole day's worth of running. I haven't done that in a long time though. <laughs> I, I was going to ask how your ankles were because I, I ran the green belt a number of times. We did, if, if our coach wanted us to run a slow Sunday run, he didn't, you know, cause town Lake, you can go fast and you you, you know, you end up half stepping people and, and, you know, basically where you're halfway, you know, teammates and kind of like to, to, you know, get on each other's business and try to, you know, beat them every, every day you have those teammates uh, that are like that. And so, you know, if you wanted us to make sure that we went slow, we'd go on the green belt because you had to like watch your ankles. You had to watch where you were going because of all the rocks and stuff and crossings of the, uh, you know, you had to cross back and forth a number of times, but some of my favorite running is definitely at the end where you get closer to the waterfalls. Um, you know, some of those that go through the, through the forest where there's just kind of a dirt path and the, and the trees and in the fall, it's almost fall. And that's my favorite time to run the green belt. Like this, the best, like I'm, I'm totally jealous. You get to still run the green belt, but uh, it's just awesome. And the same thing when I, I went to, I went and trained in Boulder for a summer, uh, with some of the, the CU, uh, guys back in 2002. And there was a bunch of trails up in the Hills that were just amazing. The Walker ranch loop is still my favorite. I don't know if you've checked that out before, but Magnolia yeah, well, I, I was, I was still living in Boulder in 2002 when you were there. Oh, there so. you go. Yeah. So yeah. we probably crossed paths, but yeah, yeah, we, we, I'd go up to, you know, Magnolia road and all that stuff go up to, uh, Gold Hill, um, just all over those places. And, and those were great too, but there's something about the green belt that just yeah. is like a little different, you know? 
Well, and, and I think part of the, what I love about it and what I try to emphasize here on the Active Towns channel is talking about how cities can be thinking about how can you provide access to the residents so that they can get their nature fix. And the fact that I can get on a bike and within eight minutes be parked up at a you know, relatively visible, secure a bike parking rack in front of you know, the pool and then be out on the trail you know, in less than 10 minutes, that's pretty extraordinary for a city of a million people. And, you know, if I go the other direction, like if I have something that I need to do in downtown, I'm literally in downtown within eight minutes too. So it's, that is incredibly, I think one of the unknown secrets about the new status that is Boulder is, or excuse me, that is Austin. Now I got Boulder in my brain, uh, is Austin. It's the same with, with, with Boulder is that you can get to those meaningful destinations that you're looking to get to, whether it's downtown or whether it's a, a really cool uh, restaurant or coffee shop or access to nature, which is, you know, huge. And of course, the, the world renowned Barton Springs pool. I mean, who doesn't, you know, love being close to that. And we're Especially literally if you're not finishing a run, places. right? When you're, yeah. when you're finishing, you finish a run, you jump in there. It's like an ice bath. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the real reason I brought you on here today is to celebrate this, is to celebrate your podcast. So you mentioned Talking Headways and you just hit the 500 mark, just surpassed the 500 mark, 500 episodes. Congratulations. That is freaking awesome. Thanks. Oh man. Uh, it's crazy. I can't believe that we've been doing this since 2013 and, um, it's just, uh, it's a, you know, I, I guess the, you know, we make up these milestones for numbers and, and I guess for some reason, half, a, half, a, half a millennia is, is pretty good. Um, but it's still like when I was, I was talking to uh, Kia Wilson about this, like I looked up some stats and like maybe like 1% of podcasts make it past like 23 episodes or something like some silly, ridiculous number, right? Like most, most people end up stopping at seven, which is why yours is still, is still impressive as well. Right. Active towns keep on going. That's awesome. Um, but like, you know, people start them and then they stop them. And so getting to that many 500 is just, I'm just, uh, you know, grateful for all the folks that keep listening and all the folks that keep coming on the show. And we need to get you on the show too. We need to get you on a Mondays. We need to get you on the podcast. I feel like I've neglected my duty to get you to come on the show and that's my fault. But, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's just like one of those things where you just keep grinding. And, and I, I relate this to running as well. Like it's just grinding, right? You just kind of put it out every day. You got to do those miles, trials and miles, and miles of trials and get those going. Cause, uh, it just, you know, stacks up on top and, and you build an archive. And, um, in the end, there's something that you can find something for everybody basically now, hopefully anyways, in the, in the podcast archive. So it's pretty cool. And thanks for having me on to, to talk about it because it is weird being on this side of the microphone, I must say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I noticed you you already uh, flung one question at me. <laughs> that's great. No, I, I kick I, it back I, to you. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. I kick mistake. this back to you. Uh, yeah, and in fact, uh, so it, it is worth mentioning that, yeah, there's two feeds. You, you do have the, uh, the 500th episode of the actual podcast, but you also have your, um, your Monday uh, version as well. And you just released the Mondays at the Overhead Wire uh, episode number 159, I believe was what we just had, right? With Wes Marshall. Yep. 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 159. So that was, uh, yeah, that one, that's it. That's been interesting because in the, in the, in the start of the podcast of the Talking Headways podcast, it was me and Tanya, just, you know, Tanya Snyder, just, you know, shooting the breeze and talking about news and articles and stuff. And then eventually when she went to go work at Politico, um, where she was for a really long time and doing the transportation beat there at, at, at the Capitol, um, I took over the podcast and then it became kind of an interview podcast where it was just me and somebody else coming on the show. And so it wasn't really that banter that I was like looking for, whether, you know, I was kind of inspired by uh, the Dan Patrick show. I was talking, Wes and I were talking about this after the show like yesterday. Um, and also uh, the Dig, Dig Nation kind of stuff, like back in the day, right? Those old school podcasts. Actually, I think Dig just, actually, Dig just came back and they're starting it uh, over again. I don't know if you're a fan of that show, but I, I really enjoy that. And even Conan well, O'Brien. And, and you friend. talked about that with Tanya. Um, in yeah. the intro to the 500th episode, you, you gave a little bit of that history and, and story of yeah. the, the origin story of it. Yeah. And so did yeah. she. And, so, yeah. Yeah. And so the, on the, the Monday show was kind of trying to bring that back. And so, um, you know, we've had Chrissy Mancini Nichols come on we have Tracy McMillan come on. 
Um, and, and, uh, and sometimes we have, you know, different guests on and sometimes it's just me like talking about the news. Right. So we just try, it's just a way for me to kind of cover the news as it comes out. I feel like the talking headways, uh, podcast is more evergreen to a certain extent where you can listen to an episode and it probably makes sense whenever you're listening to it. But the, the Monday show is more kind of topical and timely where we kind of just shoot the breeze and talk about random stuff. And then also can get into like the stuff that we're talking about, right? Just talk about Barton Springs or running or whatever it may be that just kind of pops in our head. And at the end, I have a, a section called Puppies and Butterflies where we talk about something fun and something that maybe didn't fit in the in the discussion about cities, but it always ends up being me talking about probably like Star Wars or, or or the TV shows I'm watching or something like that. But I just kind of want a place to to hang out and 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 chat about that stuff. So um, that's where that's where we do it. And so we've done 159 of those, 500 of talking headway. So that's 659 episodes, which is, oh my gosh, I can't even believe that we've done that many. It's crazy. <laughs> and again, that's an add on to the real meat of what the overhead wire is, which is this service where you are again, searching through the, the news and then producing that, uh, that, newsletter that goes out every single day. Friday is always sort of a, a an overview. I sh- should say Monday through Thursday is, you know, the the encapsulation of the news that's kind of hitting the wire and, and, and passing through and hence the overhead wire. You're, you know, you're getting that out. And then Fridays, uh, I can't remember if it was a couple of years ago, you started summarizing and, and, and that became, you know, the best of uh, you know, the previous week. Talk a little bit about that service. And because that's, this is your job. This is how you make a living is, you know, going through, wading through all of this urbanism stuff, active transportation stuff, transit stuff, housing stuff, um, and then producing uh, this newsletter that shows up in my inbox every single morning. And oftentimes that's, that's how I get ideas for, you know, articles to promote out on threads or LinkedIn, um, as well as sometimes it gives me ideas for potential guests for, for my podcast. Yeah. And that's awesome because that's what it's supposed to be for. It's supposed to be for everybody else taking it and making it their own and, and, you know, based taking the basic information and, and, you know, figuring out something that works for them. And, and I really appreciate that. I think that, um, one of the things that's really interesting about the newsletter is that we started it just because I was throwing, you know, news items at my boss back in 2005. And it's been going since about 2006 and and it's the form that it is now. It used to be called the other side of the tracks when it was at Reconnecting America. And then it got changed to the overhead wire daily as I took stuff over back in 2014, I think it was. But, um, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's just me collecting news and information and then trying to share it with everybody. I feel like that's a really important thing to, cause there's so much that comes, it's like a fire hose. I mean, I get complaints from folks t- telling me that my newsletter is a fire hose, which I totally understand it is a fire hose, but also I'm cutting the stream down of that fire hose by a lot because we go through so many news items every day, 1500 or so, and then we cut them down to the 40 and then we tag them and you know categorize them and put them out there. And so it's just one of those things where I'm like a lifelong learner. I love learning new stuff. And so that's, it was a perfect match for me um, as somebody who cares about cities and loves cities and wants everybody to learn about cities. And this is the thing that I can do. I, I was actually asked many t- years ago after I finished planning school, they were like, do you want to be a planner? And I was like, kind of, cause, but I don't like interacting with people at meetings very much. Like I don't like getting yelled at. I don't like that type of stuff. And so if I can sit in my corner and make my maps and do my work or collect these articles and share them with folks who are sitting in front of those folks and getting yelled at sometimes, then that's probably the place for me. So I think that that's probably my niche is, is, is kind of sitting here in my office and kind of throwing stuff at people and having them use it to their benefit as much as possible. Yeah. 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 I can't remember who you were talking with where you mentioned that, that, yeah, I'm kind of an introvert and I'm kind of like, you know, it's like, I don't really want to be out there that much. I you know, you want to basically be able to con- have some control over that. You don't necessarily want to be the the face of, of the community out there in those open yeah. houses. I think that, that was Paul Comfort. I think he was talking about leadership and Paul's like, you know, Paul, I mean, he's like a very gregarious and like a uh, big guy, like he's a big personality, right? Like, you, I saw him in the elevator at Impact and, and he was like, oh, Jeff, how's it going? And I was like, oh, 
Hey, Paul, nice to see you. <laughs> like, I'm not like the, it's, it's funny. And, and we were, you know, he was talking about leadership and that was what he wrote his, his art, his item on in his book. And it's funny because thinking about back when I was in high school and running on the, on cross country and I was the, I was the fastest person on my team, but I don't know if people would say like, I was the leader, maybe I was the leader because I was running fast, but I wasn't the person that was like, Hey, you do this or you do this. I was more like, you know, follow my lead. I'm just going to go run a bunch of miles. And you guys, if you do, if you want to do that, then let's go, <laughs> let's do it together. But, uh, different leadership styles. And so I think mine is probably, you know, do the work and sit in the background and run the miles and those types of things. That's kind of the way I approach it. And I think that's why I've amassed the archive of a hundred thousand art items in the newsletter that we've amassed, right? Like we've tagged each one by topic and city and along the way I've had interns help out, uh, over those years, but We've put together the, you know, the, the 600 and plus podcasts and the, the hundred thousand collection of links that are tagged in by topic and city. And so we're just creating an archive of cities and, and, uh, you know, that's kind of where I fit, I think in this global scheme of advocacy. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to pull up your, um, your subscription page here, if we get on over here so we can see, so folks can give it a try. They can do a, a free two week trial, no credit card needed, give it, get an idea, get a taste as to what it's like to have a, a curated news feed again, sort of in those different categories, uh, refresh my memory in terms of the different uh, four or five different categories that, uh, that you show up in my email inbox each day. Yeah, sure. So we talk about transportation, urban design, urban issues uh, like housing and things like that. And then um, environment as it pertains to cities. So uh, environment and, and uh, oh, now, now I can't remember the night I'm on the spot, so I can't remember the, the title of it, but it's ecology, environment and ecology, I think is what it is. And then uh, research as, uh, you know, we go through the research items and pull out like scholarly articles and mostly they're uh, the, the little intro pieces that the folks have written. Um, and now I can't remember the name of that either, but, uh, the <laughs> research is good <laughs> no. enough. I mean, cause the, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and that's, stuff. and that's one of the cool things too, is, uh, as somebody who's previously a researcher in the sciences, it's, it's cool to actually be able to get to some of the source articles and some of the research that's there. So, and, and I know that, you know, like you just hit, like we said, you just had Wes Marshall on yesterday. And so, you know, in multiple times in his, his discussion, you, you know, he was like, you know, bringing up yeah, research and articles and diving down into the, some of the source articles and some of the source research that takes place on that. Uh, and so when we look at your uh, premium uh, daily subscription, the, the premium subscription is $150 for the year if you pay upfront annual or $15 uh, per month. And then uh, there's also an enterprise option too. So if you happen to be working for a large company or, or doesn't have to be large, but a company where there's multiple subscriptions or like for a city, et cetera, you do provide that, uh, enterprise option. I think it's just invaluable to be able to have a bit of a curated list of, um, you know, things to at least look at. I would say probably 75% of the time, 85% of the time, you're, you're like spot on of, of what's hitting my radar too. And then like the other 20 to 25% of the time you, you, you're, you're picking it up. You, I can't remember a single time where you've like completely missed something that hit my radar unless it was something obscure from Europe or something like that. But yeah, so you're, it's, it's amazing how much stuff you're sorting through and it's it's worth noting too that some of the stuff you're you're you, as part of the newsletter you've got a little bit of of color there. It's not just you know links and title. Almost every single link and title has a little summary. But then in the first part of the newsletter, you take a topic and you dive a little deeper. So you're almost doing like a little mini blog on the top on the top of all these access to links. And, and sometimes even channeling some of the articles that are linked below. Talk a little bit about that. And is that, has that evolved or is that, have, has that been something since the very beginning? Um, I know my subscription, I think I started it uh, probably four years ago, right around the pandemic. But do yeah, tell. It's evolved a little bit because um, I it takes it takes quite a while to put together the the, the links and then to cat, you know catalog them and everything and put in the tags and all that stuff um but over time i've been trying even the last year or so i've actually been trying to write more and pull stuff together and and uh, as i was talking with the west yesterday i hate red ink and i hate 
I'm not a big writer. Like it's not my thing, but, um, I do think it's important to kind of synthesize some of the stuff and make sure that everybody understands that they're not just the categories and they're not just siloed, right? There's not just transportation and urban design and, and housing and things like that. They're actually all connected the environment. And so I try really hard to take items that are, I find have a connection and make that connection for folks so that they don't have to, you know, dig in themselves as much, or maybe, you know, put something together that maybe people weren't thinking about. So a couple of times a week, not every day, cause I don't think I could write like that every day. And some days the articles just aren't as good as other days. It's just how it is. You know, there's some days that are better than others. I know you probably know this. You're like, well, this day is not the best article day. Um, or maybe there's one day where like every article is good, which annoys me because I'm like, why didn't you spread this out over the rest of the week universe? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, th I feel like I, I want to put it together so that people can understand that there's a connection between everything. And, you know, I, I try to make those connections and I put that together and that, and, and that actually, um, you know, you were talking about also doing the, the best of at the end of the week too. Um, that came out of, I've actually was doing that before on Wednesdays. So people would get two e emails on Wednesdays. But then when my, my daughter was born, I was like, well, I need to take a day where I can actually record the podcast and do all this other stuff. I can't work six days a week anymore. It's just not realistic or possible or smart for that matter. I need to take time off. So I decided to do, that's a little easier to put together the best of. And so at the end of the week, we do the best of, and then it's kind of like, here's the podcast from this week. Here's the best of, and, uh, we'll be back on Monday and, and we'll jam it out again. But, um, but yeah, it's just kind of a self-preservation thing for, for, for the most part. Uh, but we did switch it out when I think people were actually kind of getting annoyed that I was giving them two emails on a Wednesday, uh, which was probably too much. Yeah. Now we talked about there, you mentioned this uh, briefly in just a, mo or a moment ago uh, about, uh, you know, the podcasts and, uh, you're part of the streets blog network. How does that work? How, how are you part of the streets blog, uh, family? Yeah, it's a really good question because people are like, do you work for Streets Blog? I was like, no, I don't really work for Streets Blog. So what happened was when Tanya invited me to write a column and I said no, and I was like, let's talk, let's do a podcast. So we just started producing the podcast and, and, and eventually, you know, Tanya left. And so she was the, she was the, the editor at Streets Blog USA. She wrote the articles like Kia Wilson does now. Um, and basically what would happen is um, they're, they're like, well, you know, Tanya's gone. We're going to shut this down. I was like, well, if you let me keep doing this and kind of do my own thing with it, I'll just keep, you know, producing it and it'll be on streets blog USA, but I'll take care of everything related to it. I'll put to, you know, put it out on the RSS feed. I'll do the, the advertising and all that stuff. Um, and so they kind of just let me keep going and they were like, okay, content, you know, it's like free content for us. We don't have to pay you. Uh, and so that's, that was the, how that happened is like, you know, when Tanya left, I just was like, Hey, I'll, I'll keep doing it if you keep wanting it. And they're like, yeah, sure. And then when Gersh came on, uh, I actually remember going to New York city for, um, the a podcast festival. And I got to meet up with Gersh there when he first got hired and, and he was like, yeah, let's, let's just keep doing it, keep doing it. Um, and so, you know, they were been really nice to me and, and posting my stuff. And I really appreciate that it goes out on the streets blog network. And then each of the individual streets blogs around the country is SF, Chicago, um, LA, et cetera. They can syndicate it from USA if they want to. So, um, it's out there too. So it's been really beneficial to be connected with streets blog and something, you know, a place that I've already loved as it was. And, uh, as I mentioned with Tanya, we were always talking anyways, you know, for about, you know, the news articles or sources that we had or, or, you know, topics that we were discussing that were similar. So it was kind of a natural fit. Yeah. yeah. And it, it it was funny too, because in today's episode or yesterday's episode, the Monday uh, episode with, with Wes, uh, you like came up with the number of one of the episodes. It was like <laughs> episode number 300. And, so, and Wes was called you out. I was like, wait a minute, yeah. did you, do you have like a photographic memory? Do you have that and all that? So uh, I, I had to look this up. Uh, yours was episode num number 19. You, you, were, yeah. you were one of my first 20 episodes uh, way back in May of 2020. We were in the heart of the lockdown of the pandemic when you and I talked yeah. the last time. That was crazy. Yeah. So how, how, how have no, so, so since we, since we started talking back then, I mean, we've had so many episodes, I'm curious, like 
what you've learned from your experience, like podcasting and like how, how you feel about podcasting now versus podcasting then, like you've made this leap to YouTube, which is amazing. Like I try to promote your stuff, uh, if possible, you know, on the, in the news links and also in the intros and stuff, there's like this cadre now of, of folks on YouTube and, and Wes and I did, and Wes is actually was like, you should go on YouTube too. And I was like, I don't know. These guys all have this like professional, like production stuff. I do the podcast and I like putting out the audio, but editing, I know I, we edit the, t- the t- talking headways podcast pretty heavily. We take out a lot of, um, it ends up being like five, 10 minutes of, of just pause words and stuff like that we take out. And so video is just scary to me because if you edit a video with somebody's face, it's like kind of choppy and whatever. So I'm just curious what your experiences are or what you feel about then versus now and like going to the video format and all that stuff. I'm curious. Yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, um, the big change that that took place since May 2020 when when you and I uh, last spoke and, and we had you on for episode 19 uh, is the – me coming on over into the video environment. And and this is being produced both as a video and also as a traditional podcast. And I do the same thing. I, I produce the video first and get an edit that I like and feel like it's nice and smooth. And I don't try to over edit the, the ums and ahs in that format. I'll do a little bit, especially if there's any transitions or, or it gets, kind of bad, but if I can do it tactfully and it it doesn't seem too jittery, then I do that. But then I do the same thing. I go through and heavily edit the audio to really clean it up, tighten it up, get rid of the ums and ahs. Sometimes I stutter. So I'll say the, 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 (laughs) multiple times. (laughs) So I I do that, but I had to chuckle walking around listening to your episode uh, yesterday um, or from yesterday. I listened to it this morning with Wes uh, and you were talking about video and I'm like, yes, He's, he's going to get into more videos. So I have to pull up your YouTube page now. <laughs> so here you are. So I was super, super stoked to, to hear you and Wes, uh, you know, sort of announce on the, the, the Monday episode, uh, episode number 159, that you're really leaning into maybe not every single time, but you're leaning into uh, doing the, uh, the video as well. So that's cool. Yeah. So hopefully we can do a few more. I mean, I record them on video as it is on my Zoom. So um, I don't have any fancy uh, equipment or anything like that, but um, I can just kind of record the ones we're doing. And actually I record all of the videos that we've done, but I ended up throwing them all in the trash because uh, just because they take up a lot of memory. Uh, so it's the first thing I do when I finish, and actually some of the guests have been like, can you delete your video? Because <laughs> they don't want us to look at their houses or whatever it is, or I'll get the question beforehand. They're like, is this going to be on video? Because if so, I need to go like do my hair or, you know, go do something. And I'm like, no, it's okay. It's just going to be audio. So don't, don't worry about that. So there's some like there's a little bit of, of, of fear, I think, from folks when the video uh, thought pops up. And I think the same for me, too. I actually ended up putting this hat on because my hair is a total mess. Uh, <laughs> so uh, usually it's headphones and I don't have to worry about it too much. The headphones kind of cover it up. But then w- when my headphones uh, would just take them off. So uh, this actually probably works better. But yeah, so I wear this Giants hat all the time, but uh, it's usually not with the podcast. But it's so yeah. funny. Well, I love it. I'm 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 glad to 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 welcome you, uh, you know, officially into you know the the, the YouTube environment. Uh, you obviously have 301 videos out there because you've been pushing the the audio only. Um, but now that uh, you you might throw a few out with Wes uh, and have the visuals on there, let's uh, let's you know kind of bump that up. Let's uh, let's get past 150 uh, subscribers and 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 get folks on there. So yeah, I'm looking forward to. Uh, getting some folks here heading your way. Yeah. You know, one of the, the first videos we did on the, the overhead wire, actually probably the, the first video we did was, uh, was we did an election show in 2020. And so we had seven hours of discussion and talking and, and all that, that we did. We just did a live show. I, I didn't want to watch television that night. I just didn't want to sub- subject myself to that. So we had a bunch of folks, uh, come by and here I can uh, fact check you here, here, <laughs> Here's your oldest. Your oldest is uh, Hitler finds out the uh, transportation bill <laughs> isn't finished <laughs> 13 years ago. 
Yeah, well, I guess I did nine years ago. I did it for my Patreon. I did a video too, kind of like you know that. But but the first like actual real you know video we did was was back in 2020 on election night, and uh, Chrissy Mancini Nichols was on Jerome Horn, and then we had a cadre of guests that were amazing. We had uh, folks that were ended up being in the administration in the Biden administration. I uh, remember Robert that Biden episode. Yeah, years. yeah, yeah. So uh, it was really cool, and so we might do that again. I'm not sure yet. I still haven't quite figured out how to how to get that to go, but. That was fun, just kind of doing those live videos and and just hanging out for a night when you, I knew that I didn't want to watch the television, right? I just didn't want to to see what was going to happen. And, you know, we got good news on my, you know, I don't know if <laughs> I feel like you're probably in the same boat, but we got good news. Um, but in the end, uh, you know, I just didn't want to do that. So it was fun to hang out with people. And it's fun to just have people in the comments section, you know, being goofy and, you know, whatever else. I'm, I, I love YouTube generally. Like uh, I watch my Star Wars podcast and stuff like that and um, used to watch a few more things. So it's fun to now, jump did in. You, even though, did you live stream that or did you record oh you live streamed it wow yeah we live streamed that we were on from 3 30 i think to like nine or 10 o'clock or something like that and um so uh, we had three people hosting so that we could some of us could leave at some points and like you know go do whatever we did go eat dinner or something or <laughs> take it because eight hours sitting there is a long time and also I, I had newfound appreciation for all those anchors that like sit there on election night or whatever for like five hours or whatever it is um, but yeah, but it was fun cause we got to talk to like Christoph Spieler was on and James Lamas and, uh, just a cool Beth Osborne, Kevin, the good, just a cool group of people. And, uh, hopefully we can do it again this year. Yeah. 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 You just mentioned James. I just uh, saw that he made the move from Houston to uh, New York. I know Houston, the big loss for Houston. Um, they've been doing some crazy stuff, so. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's why, cause his, his energy left. And so, you know, the new mayor <laughs> caused some problems, Mayor Whitmire. Yeah. I, uh, I had Veronica on, um, I think the episode released, we were profiling her book and, uh, Veronica O. Davis and we had her on, but she was still with the city, but literally I think the episode went out and it was like the next week she had resigned and left. <laughs> I was like, ah. Yeah, crazy. Uh, Houston, I love you and I hate you. I, <laughs> I grew up in, and I was born in Humble, Texas, and I grew up in Kingwood, and I, I love Houston, but there's some stuff that I just, um, there's they've done a lot of good stuff too, and Austin's done a lot of good stuff too, but there's just some times where I'm just like, I mean, even everywhere you live, I think is going to be like that. San Francisco, I, you know, kick myself all the time about stuff that we do or don't do, or, you know, the Valencia bikeway and things like that. So we, we've got a long way to go in our, in our, but we're, we're, we're trying. <laughs> yeah. we're trying. Well, and, and I'm, I, I can relate. I'm the same way with Los Angeles. I'm a fourth generation Angelino. And so I, I have that same love hate relationship with LA. Uh, I did my undergrad there at USC and, um, and you know, it's, I, I miss it. And then I get there and I'm like, uh, okay, I got to get out of here. Uh, and it's, and it's, and it's tough. I'm going to have, uh, Alyssa Walker on in a few weeks, uh, to talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, her new newsletter torched and the, uh, the run up to the, the 2028 Olympics. You talked about the Olympics in a couple of recent episodes and talked about just how special it was for you when you were there in London, I think you said you went to. I can remember 1984. Uh, that was my first year in college. And so uh, 1984, you know, the fall, I was heading into USC. And by the time I got to campus, you know, the Olympic rings were everywhere, all over campus. You know, the dormitories that I was in as a freshman were part of the housing for the athletes uh, there on the USC uh, campus. And of course, the diving center and the swimming were all part of the uh, the venue and the diving events, uh, you know, from 1984. There's a, a fair amount of excitement um, that goes along with it. I was in Paris this year, one month before the Olympics to do some filming and to try to gauge how Paris has transformed since uh, two years ago, I was there filming, um, documenting uh, the streets and the bike uh, network in 2022. So I wanted to see engage the improvement um, over those two years. My previous visit was 2015. 
any thoughts on the run up to the LA Olympics and and you know because that's interestingly enough even on national television even on national olympic coverage the the question or the goal the aspirations of a car free olympics filtered through um i don't know if you caught that but i certainly did uh about los angeles and how it's going to host the olympics I mean, they've been building up for a while. Uh, you know, they had the the tax measure in 2008. They had the re- reauthorization or the increase, actually. You know, to get 120 billion dollars for expanding all their transit infrastructure and and, and service and things like that. Um, and again, sorry for the sawing. <laughs> but yeah, so I I just think they're gonna they're gonna have a lot to do still before 2028. Um, they're they're just you know they're still under construction. The subway's under construction. They've got a lot of work to do in that respect. And I, I'm interested to see because I was in in London for that Olympics. I did see what was kind of going on in Paris, and and Tokyo was kind of weird because it was during the pandemic and nobody could be there anyway. So I, I don't I don't know if that really counts for anything necessarily. Uh, but I think it is interesting to think about how those cities, London and Paris, are so walkable and so accessible by. Uh, I mean, I was riding Boris bikes all over the place when I was there. It was kind of the introduction of bike share and stuff. Um, and, you know, in Paris, they've they've done some major infrastructure changes. But L.A. is so different. And um, it, I love L.A. for what it is. But I don't know if it's like one of these things where you can go to every venue in a day. It's like you're going to have to pick what you want to do, right? Like I, I went to like beach volleyball one day and then I was able to make it over for fencing or I was – I went to the soccer final and then came back in time to watch a track race in the, in, in the, in the pub with some friends. So like, I don't know if that's something that'd be possible for folks who are going to have an Olympic experience in LA. I think people are going to be able to get to the venues they want to go to, and then they'll may, might be there the whole time. And so I'm just curious, like what that experience is going to be like. I also found that like, you know, when we were, we watched the fencing and the Colombian guy won and everybody went nuts and, uh, you know, the people that are holding the Colombian flags more so. And then when we were on the train on the way back, the guy was on our, on our, on our train, on the green line. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I just saw you, Ruben Lamardo. I just saw you, you fence and, uh, you know, congratulations. And, um, I just think that's a really cool experience that I don't know if you're going to get, if you're, you know, if, if it is a car free Olympics and you're taking stuff to the venue, to your car, you might not have that experience like you may have had in Paris or, or in London. So that's kind of the things that I'm looking out for, but I don't know. I'm going to go, I'm going to go and check some stuff out because my sister lives in Bakersfield and we're probably, you know, crash there for a little bit. And I want my daughter to see it. I was actually at the soccer final in 1984 as a baby, baby, baby. <laughs> I was four at the time. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I want to go back and, 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 uh, you know, experience that again, just because it's so magical, just having everybody there and, uh, you know, all there for one reason. And, and, you know, this is maybe a little bit overly political, but I feel like now around the world, we have all of these conflicts and things where people are, you know, saying, I, this territory is mine, this territory is mine, but in sports, you know, you compete, you have a good time. And if you win, you lose, you go home the next day and feel good about yourself for trying. And so I think there's a difference there in, in kind of the geopolitical aspect of it that I love, which is sport is the ultimate competition, nothing else. One of the things that I like to emphasize too here on the channel is that it's it's not cars bad, bikes good, you know, all day long. It, you know, really, I turn to the overlapping of mobility networks that the Dutch do so well there. I mean, if you want to drive, great. It's a good experience. You can drive. You want to take transit? It's totally there for you. And Everything is interconnected with a cycling network and most locations that, you know, if, if it's within reasonable proximity, you can walk it too, because it's not going to be a situation where you're going to find that it's not safe to walk. They have done that. They've made sure that everything is safe for walking and biking, active mobility, which is really what drives transit and makes transit be so successful is it's driven off of the power of the cycle network and the fact that they can then, you know, accommodate literally tens of thousands of bikes at their, you know, main central stations, which is, you know, so incredibly cool to, to do it that way. Uh, the Utrecht station, the new Amsterdam station, absolutely amazing how you can, you know, put in and store thousands, tens of thousands of bikes. And then that is really your feeder to be able to make transit work. I'm really interested to see 
for Los Angeles, given the amount of investment that they've had in the train system, in the transit system, trying to rebuild what once was one of the most extensive rail-based transit systems that exist at the turn of the century. And I'm talking about the other turn of the century, <laughs> yeah, 19, 1900s of uh, Folks who have listened or watched, uh, you know, this uh, channel for a while know that my great great grandfather and my great 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 grandfather both worked on the the red car uh, lines and systems there um, back in the eighteen uh, hundreds and into the early nineteen hundreds, and uh, it's just amazing to me that you are now able to actually get places. Um, I love traveling there with my Brompton, being able to get you know, from LAX, be able to get onto the little connector, be able to get onto the train system, be able to go into downtown, hit USC, um, you know, ride around a little bit, make it out to Pasadena, get off, visit some friends, continue on outwards towards where my family is out in the Glendora area, get off at Azusa. Eventually we'll be able to go even further east um, out that direction, but it's getting there. It's, it's incredible the amount of investment that has been put in place uh, for that. But what really needs to catch up is it needs to be safer for everybody. I feel comfortable getting around the city on a bike in Los Angeles, um, but it needs to be safe for all ages and abilities. Yeah, for sure. I think that's one of the major things that needs help in in in, in all cities in the United States. I think one of the problems we find is that just if it, if it feels unsafe, people aren't going to take it. And it's the same thing with transit too. I mean, like in the comfort level that people have taking a, a bus or a train. Um, I always tell people if if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. It shouldn't be something that you force. So as much of a transit advocate, as much as a bike advocate, as much as a active transportation advocate as I am, I want people to be realistic about what they can and can't do. And we need to design systems that allow people to access places where they want to go safely and where they feel comfortable. And ultimately, that is on all of us to try to make sure that those are designed well and put into place. You mentioned Pasadena. I think that's really funny. I, you know, back in the, I got into all this because I went to CNU in Pasadena in 2005. And uh, that's where I met a bunch of the folks that I, I love now, Mike Leiden and uh, Jim Kumon and, and other folks who are still mm -hmm. you know, working hard to, to make all this stuff happen. And I just remember at the time thinking, oh, the gold line goes to here and it ends. And this is awesome. Like Austin doesn't have this. Nowhere I know has this. And uh, I was just inspired by L.A. And so I think maybe for the Olympics, LA can be that inspiration again, right? Where like, hey, LA's done this, maybe we can do it too. Yeah. Well, and, and it's funny you mentioned Pasadena and seeing you in the same breath. And of course, Rick Cole is now a city council member there. And he was the president, uh, you know, CEO or the executive director of CNU there for, for a little while there too, a couple of years, uh, I think, uh, emerging us out of the pandemic, if I remember correctly. And uh, so it's great to see Rick there having an urbanist on the city council there in Pasadena. That's, that's really good stuff. Uh, Jeff, what are you super excited about right now in terms of, you know, sort of this world of urbanism and housing and active mobility. And uh, you've got your finger on the pulse of the news every single day. I don't know how often you get a, a, an opportunity to talk about what what is got you encouraged and excited of, in terms of uh, recent developments, things that might be on the horizon for us. Yeah, I think um, it's interesting you ask about like what I'm enthusiastic about because I feel like I'm I'm I feel like down a lot because of the, the negative news. I mean, that you're I living in the news, and it's through. easy to get that way. But yeah, yeah. And so I have to take myself yeah. out of it sometimes because uh, it is so negative. But on the positive note, I just think that there's so much cool stuff, and maybe I, I maybe not in the United States because just like there's so much, it's hard because of, uh, you know, the, the, tr the time it takes to build stuff and kind of the things, obviously electrification of Caltrain. That's really awesome. I haven't ridden it yet, but I'm super excited about that. I think that, um, us trying to transition to a clean energy economy, it's going to require some overhead wires, uh, you know, no, no pun intended. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think we should go down this road of trying to carry our propulsion systems with us. We don't need hydrogen on board. We don't need batteries. Uh, I think we can do a lot of stuff with overhead wires. 
electrify the railways uh, around the United States. I know that the, the um, companies are not going to like that, the BNSFs and the and the Norfolk Southerns of the world, but I think that that is probably the way to go. Mm-hmm. But around the world, there's so much cool stuff happening. I was just in China in March with my wife and and the kiddo, and it was just so cool to see what Shenzhen has done, what, what Hong Kong has done, what even like some of the smaller cities have done and the amount of bus service that's in Zhuhai, which is where, uh, you know, my, my parents-in-law are living. And so there's just like a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of cool infrastructure being built. There's a lot of really interesting pedestrian stuff going on too. I mean, thinking about all the multi-use paths, I think I posted an Instagram about it when I was there that there's like all these really cool like paths that you can drive these three wheelers on and your bikes or your scooters or whatever else. And cars have a place, but they're separate from everything else. And so you feel safer. Um, and so I've, I found that really interesting too. We got to go on a ferry. We got to go on the subways. We got to go uh, on, a, on a gondola. We got all kinds of transportation experiences when we were over there. And it was just good to go and get out of the US for a little bit and see stuff going on in another place. And so there's stuff going on all over the world. It's not just China and, you know, Paris is building their Grand Paris Express and uh, obviously London just finished uh, the the Crossrail. And and so there's there's so many cool projects going on. And you mentioned Paris and, and going there a number of times. We went in 2019. I was actually there on the day that Notre Dame uh, burned down. Uh, we had left earlier that morning. We'd seen it. And, uh, there was just so many, like, there's so many light rail trains in all these small towns that you wouldn't think would, you know, warrant one, maybe a hundred thousand, 200,000 people, there's a tramway. And so that level of investment, I think is really impressive. And I think we can do that here too. We just need a little inspiration and a little political will. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it is interesting too, and reflecting on uh, both Paris and London, I was able to sort of turn my lens towards both of those cities as of being uh, Olympic cities. And so I did uh, take a, a ride out to the Olympic Village and uh, tried to document, you know, sort of the transformation that took place there because they had this uh, this sort of purpose built sort of mega campus of all of the um, uh, the uh, stadiums and, and all this other stuff that was going on there. Because like you said, it was it was kind of compact. You could get to a lot of the stuff there and, and they were really working on that. But it was interesting to see because the the vision of it was to create this uh, Queen Elizabeth, you know, Olympic Park place, and it's really a residential place now. So it was interesting to see that kind of overlay of a new urbanism sort of village that is now, you know, kind of where, uh, you know, the the event was was kind of hosted at. In the case of Paris, one of the things that I really wanted to to look in on is because. People were saying, oh, my gosh, you got to get back to Paris. I mean, the transformation has been amazing. You know, it's you're not even going to recognize it. And I was like, I was just there two years ago. I says, oh, no, 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 no. You totally have to do it. So I went and it could have been the where I was at, but it was still car choked. It was still, you know, you know, yes, there was protected bike lanes and it was there, but there was still just tons and tons of taxis and, and, and delivery vehicles and all of that. So a month prior to the event, it was certainly not a car free Olympics. It was incredibly, you know, choked with motor vehicles, but I will say this about Paris, what they did really lean into in that two year period between 2022 and 2024 were the school streets. Oh my gosh. Amazing. So talk about international, uh, you know, positive trend, uh, you've seen that in London as well and across the UK, um, and, uh, throughout Paris and the rest of France is they're really leaning into this concept of why are we allowing free access of motor vehicles around schools, especially for the youngest children? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just talked about that, uh, with Sam Sklar, you know, the, on the Monday show, we talked about, uh, all the, the pick up and drop off problems that schools have been having because they've been cutting bus service. And so, you know, that's a big issue that we were thinking about. And I think about now too, with, you know, my daughter just started, uh, preschool and, uh, and, and daycare and we walk her there, you know, it's only like a quarter mile. And now that I am kind of her custodian, I am like, even though the sidewalks are wide, even though there's cars parked on the side, even though it's a fairly slow commercial street, it still feels like I'm always kind of having to have my eye on her because, uh, you know, I don't want her to run out in the street, but also like, I don't want a car to jump up 
off of the curb. And I, I know that, you know, going slow and that's probably less likely to happen, but after what happened to West portal, um, you know, I don't know if you've heard about this, but there was a family of four that was killed by a driver who lost control of their vehicle. Uh, and, you know, basically at a bus stop, they're waiting to go to the San Francisco zoo. And so that could have been me, that could have been my family. And so I'm kind of a little bit more cautious now watching for that stuff. And so I think closing off school streets for, you know, the kiddos is really good and you don't need to be breathing all that exhaust. You don't need to be, uh, you know, shouldn't have to be worried about whether your kid's going to get to school or not, or whether you're going to get run over on the sidewalk, it should be safe. And so that's something that I'm thinking about pretty frequently now. Yeah. Of all cities in the United States, New York and San Francisco are the two cities that I, I kind of look to and think about of being, why the heck are there cars on these streets at all? Because people have some affinity for them. Uh, they are useful in some respects, uh, but uh, there it is pretty easy to get around without it. I mean, we don't have a car and, you know, I, I use it from time to time to, to, you know, get to places where we need to go or to go and run an errand, Home Depot or whatever it may be. But for the most part, we can get to the doctors on Muni. We can get to the park by walking. We can get to the mission uh, by, um, by, uh, by, by bike. And so I just got her a car seat, or a bike seat on the back of my bike. And so she's been pretty excited about that. Although every time we hit a bump, on, she loses her, her, her bar, which uh, has been really frustrating for her. <laughs> She said, Daddy, I lost my bar. My bar is in the street. Daddy, it's back there. Go get my bar. I'm like, I'm not picking your bar off the street to eat. <laughs> you dropped it. I told you to hold it this time like I told you to hold it last time. Um, I keep looking down because I found some photos of, of China that I, I felt like you needed to see. Uh, let's see if I can get it for you. This is Shenzhen. This is one of the stations there. And then uh, this is the, the transfer point for um, for the, the folks there as well for, to get from one train to the other. And so... Um, this is underneath that big kind of like, uh, that hole or that, that display thing up top. But I just think that's really cool that they can, oh, actually this is, it's show, I'm showing it. I'm really bad at putting this in front of the camera. I'm sorry I didn't send these to you earlier, but, uh, <laughs> but I just think that's really cool. Like, it's just like the infrastructure there is just so amazing. This, this station's probably only like, you know, five, two, three, four, five years old. And so it's really cool. So there's lots of stuff going on that's, that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I talk about, um, I talk, I was talking about the safety stuff and, and what's going on in San Francisco and my daughter. And then I was like, okay, gotta get, gotta get back to positive. Cause we, we are, there's a lot of cool stuff going on around the world and, and things like that. So, yeah. Well, and there, there is cool stuff going on in San Francisco. Um, you know, I, I, I had, uh, some of your local characters on, I had Luke and, uh, Roger on, uh, you know, to, to talk about, you know, sort of the conditions that are going on there in San Francisco. So I'm hopeful that we'll be able to, to move forward and get there. Um, I'm, I'm saying, you know, kind of tongue in cheek, you know, that New York and San Francisco, the two cities that, you know, why is there even cars here? I, you know, really what I mean by that is not prioritizing them, not prioritizing moving at speed. I mean, even, even every city that I love, you know, in the Netherlands, there's, there's cars there. They're just not speeding. They're moving at reasonable times. And again, you have mobility choice, which is my whole point is we get to that level of breaking car dependency. And you could do that in, in, in Austin, in the downtown oh, yeah, totally. area and, and all, you know, I, I lived on 38th street for a really long time and it was just easy to get around on the bus and number one and, and a uh, biking and, um, just there's, there's access. It just, you know, need to prioritize the, the modes that will get you to I where. I can't even remember the last time I needed to drive a car to get anywhere here in the city. So I, I can get around, especially with electric, electric assist now. So we have an electric assist cargo bike, uh, for doing grocery runs and stuff like that. And, you know, cause you know, that hill, it's a little bit of a steep hill to get up here. Um, yeah. So I need one uh, of those for here. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> It's, it's totally a game changer. It's a game changer for heat. It's a game changer for, for steep hills. Um, totally, totally, totally recommend it. Yeah. I'm, I'm worried about those hills. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, for coming on the podcast once again, and congratulations once again for episode number 500 of the Talking Headways uh, podcast. And folks, please get on over to the website, The Overhead Wire. Dot com and check out the, the news service. Uh, it's really, really money well spent. And I 
absolutely enjoy having it and seeing it every single morning. Uh, I, I do, like most of your fans, you know, we're, we're like, if, if it doesn't hit the inbox, I'm like, oh no, what, what, what's happened? <laughs> <Where's that? laughs> I get a lot of angry, like I get a lot of angry emails when it doesn't come and, and uh, I do try to post when it's not going to come. So on yeah, Friday yeah. or Thursday, yeah. I'm like, it won't be well, here on Sometimes Monday, you need but... to take a break too. Yeah. Like you, you had to take some time off when you were in China. So that's, that's right. That's, yeah. As you should. A week off there. Uh, but I did work for three weeks there, which was really interesting. It's really interesting trying to work online uh, from China to say, well, that's all I'm going to say about that. But uh <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's interesting to try to get it out every week, but I do get angry emails if, if it's not there and I didn't warn people that it wasn't going to be there. Like, where's my stuff? Where's my emails? I miss it. I miss my emails, which is great. I mean, that makes me feel good because obviously it's valuable. Don't people, be so. mean folks. <laughs> be, worry about him. I'm like, Jeff, I hope you're okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Probably just took a, took an extra yeah. day off for yeah. some, some reason or another. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Awesome. Thanks, John. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Jeff Wood. And if you did, please say, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. And if you're enjoying this content here on the Active Towns channel, please consider supporting my efforts. It's easy to do. Just head on over to activetowns.org, click on that support tab. And there's several different options, including Patreon, Patreon supporters do get early and ad-free access to all the video content, and it really does help out a great deal. So thank you all so much for tuning in. And until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.